Hey everyone, welcome back to GM Details. Do you know, it's been so long since I brought you an interior cleaning video that it's about time I gave my own car a well-earned detail. As shameful as it sounds, I've never actually touched the insides with a cleaning product since buying the thing two years ago. So in this video, I'll be sharing my routine, what products and tools I'll be using for the carpet, interior plastics and leather seats. So let's get stuck in. So first, I get everything out of the car, mats, any child seats, but only remove them if you're competent at refitting them and any other junk I can see in the door pockets, etc. Then it's straight in with a dry vacuum. I'm using the Karcher MV3P from the carpet upwards. I'll explain later why I do it this way, but some of you will have already worked it out and those that haven't clearly don't vacuum their own house. I start from the rear of the car, simply because I always have anyone who comes for a valet to reverse into the drive. That way with the doors open I don't have to walk around them every time I need to go and get a brush or a cloth. I find it more efficient this way. Let me know in the comments section how you start an interior valet. I'm using the standard vacuum brush head first as it means the bristles are agitating the carpet fibres and loosening any trapped sand but it can't get into some narrow areas so the crevice tool is used after the initial brush. Now you might be thinking that these carpets are immaculate and you're right, they are. <laughs> They're well protected by a full set of rubber floor mats and they save me so much time when it comes to cleaning, needing little more than a vacuum. Not like the size 11 feet of the driver though, just wait till you see the mess he's left. I cleaned the mats on the last video, remember, with a drill brush and the ADBL all-purpose cleaner. If you missed it, I'll pop a link to that video in the description below for you to check out, after you've watched this one of course. So after I've finished vacuuming the rear floors, it's onto the fronts and slide both the front seats back as far as they'll go. Some carpets are easier to clean than others. The higher pile with these BMW carpets do help release more sandy dirt, as you can see with just using that crevice tool. They're like microfiber weave rather than carpet fibers, but if you use too aggressive a brush on them, they'll start pulling strands of fibers out. So this is why I'm reluctant to brush the carpets first on any ingrained dirt. And in this case, with the rubber mats protecting most of the feet area, it's really not much more than dust extraction with the vacuum cleaner using the crevice and brush attachments. As long as you're thorough with the process, minding any electrical connectors under the seats, it shouldn't really take much more than a few minutes in each footwell. If you think there's an odour problem within the carpet, you could try sprinkling some bicarbonate of soda onto the carpet and leave it overnight. Another way to remove some odours is cutting an onion in half and leaving that in the car overnight too. It's an old dealership trick. The pedal area of a BMW is a wee bit different to some other cars in that the accelerator pedal is hinged on the floor and it's very easy to miss the amount of dirt that collects around the hinge area. So in I go first with the vacuum, collecting the stones and sand before giving the rest of the area one last brush down with the vacuum brush attachment for now. So now that the pedals have been vacuumed, I can start cleaning them with a suitable cleaner. You don't want anything that will leave the rubber slippery, so an all-purpose cleaner will be ideal. I'm using Koshkemi Green Star here, but you could use something like Built Hamper Surfex or even Garage Therapy Zero Interior Cleaner. I'm using Green Star at 10% dilution, so in a 500ml spray bottle, you only need 50ml of Green Star to 450ml of water. And it's such an economical product, it's only about £6 for a litre, so that's going to last you a very long time indeed.
The next area I concentrate on are the plastics and to keep the video a little bit shorter I'm not going to bore you with going over all of the plastics in the car as I'm sure most of you will be well versed in how to clean door sills but I'm going to ask one question though Is anyone still using brushes for this type of work? Let me know if you're now using the microplastic scrub pad, I've featured them many times on the channel. They're such a great reusable product, easily chucked in the washing machine after use and they always come back good as new. I'll be interested to know how you're getting on with them. You can get these everywhere now, they're becoming quite a time saver for cleaning interior plastics and they work really well with these all purpose cleaners. I certainly wouldn't be without them now, but I still trust the knowledge from this research done by the leather repair company that they can remove the protective layer from leather and or damage older worn leather even further, something that other experts in the industry have agreed on, but it's just like the magic eraser argument all over again, but I'll be showing you on an alternative in just a few moments. If you're new to the channel, I'll just show you quickly how effective they can be cleaning plastic trim. This centre console side has got some marks down the side of it. So we're still using Kosh Kenny Green Star and work it in with the white side of the pad. Wipe away any residue and just look at the difference. To finish this segment, I had filmed it in time lapse but you can see the advantages of the pad over brushes any day and I'm purposely not touching the leather with them. So as you've seen, I've been slowly working my way from the floor upwards with the cleaning process because as you vacuum the carpet, you kick up dust into the air and it lands back on the plastics again. Hence why I said earlier about doing the vacuuming before the dusting. Here I'm using a very soft brush from a brand, sadly no longer in business, but with the vacuum turned on nearby, quickly dusting around the centre console before any chemicals are used just helps to minimise micro scratches on the soft plastics. I'm not so keen on using an all-purpose cleaner on these plastics either, so I'd rather opt for a glass cleaner. I find this perfect for the likes of piano black trim, anything delicate really, and rather than spraying directly, I apply to the cloth first. cloth here is the Klin glass cloth and I believe something similar to what Garage Therapy have collaborated with into detailing with branding their own glass towel with an embossed logo. I'm hoping to pick one up very soon for no other reason than sheer indulgence. Automotive leather is huge business and rather surprisingly something that many a Valator or even some brand owners know very little about, generalising leather into one single category when there's so many varieties of leather you really need to have the right product to care for it. I'll go into that in another video coming soon where I'll take 10 leather cleaners for the type of leather that I have and show you how different they can be upon application or removal. I've shown you many times how to properly vacuum leather seats. I've probably got more leather cleaning videos than any other YouTube reviewer and qualified to speak about it too. Anyway, enough digression. Before cleaning, it's important to thoroughly vacuum the seats. Getting in the seams, leaning on the flatter panels helps separate the stitched areas and allows the brush to get in and extract any loose particles hiding from you. They can act like sandpaper, scratching away as you drive, wearing through the protective layer, 
So regular vacuuming is important, not every two years like me. As well as the brush attachment, it's also safe to use the crevice tool as long as you soften the edge of the plastic at the bottom as I'm showing you with some fine sandpaper as some can have a rough edge. While using this, don't press firmly with the nozzle into the leather at this stage. You're just trying to remove any loose debris before using a brush to, dis to dislodge anything stuck in the stitched areas. I mentioned earlier in the video about an alternative to using the thermoplastic scrubbing pads on leather and here it is. It's a similar size, similar design but perfectly safe for cleaning automotive leather. It's plant based so environmentally friendly and these looped strands are actually bamboo fibre. Very soft and durable. Reusable and machine wash safe. Not to mention quite a bit cheaper than scrub pads too. At the moment, in May 2022, they're £7.75 for 5 pads from lrcuk.com. I'll put a link in the description if you want to pick some up. I've been using these along with leather brushes for just over a year now and I still have the original sample that was sent up and one thing I can testify to is that they only get softer and fluffier as the more you use them. Great news for your interior leather surfaces. So that's how good they are when I tested them on my seat. You don't know how dirty your leather gets until you clean a little bit away. So as the interior is done I can turn to the doors and the bamboo pad is also perfect for cleaning door cards too. So they're not just for leather, they're equally good on plastics too. Just so happens that I've got leather door card inserts. So I finish up using the soft detailing brush again for dusting around the switches and buttons while the vacuum hose is nearby to collect the newly airborne debris. And that's us done.
Hope you've enjoyed the video. I look forward to seeing you all in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss future videos, especially that 10 leather cleaner test. That's going to be a real eye-opener for sure. Till next time, take care. Thank you.